Taylor Swift got famous because of Kanye West. Hey guys, Don here, your pop culture boy. So the last time I had an unpopular opinion video was around this time in 2021. Yeah, a year ago. I've been putting this video off for so long and it's honestly overdue. Now, if your feelings are easily hurt or you have to agree with everything someone says, if you base your entire personality trait on celebrities, then this video is for <laughs> Yes, it is time to piss people off, get your popcorn, get your snacks, and let's get into these unpopular opinions that should be popular. For years now, there's been the speculation that the music industry, mainly Atlantic Records, is trying to take down Nicki Minaj, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Now Barbs, before y'all start to say I hate Nicki Minaj, let me explain where I'm coming from. A lot of these major artists like Nicki Minaj have gotten so famous to the point that they have become conglomerates. They have been so commodified, like Travis Scott did a song called Franchise where he's basically saying that he's a franchise in the rap sphere. And even Jay-Z said it, I am not a businessman, I'm a business man. So when I look at Nicki Minaj, she is no different from a KFC or a Coca-Cola at this point. And KFC and Coca-Cola has caused other brands to rise solely because those other brands like Pepsi or Popeyes saw that, hey, people like that shit and I want a piece of that pie. Matter of fact, I want the whole pie. Nicki Minaj has done something that no one has ever seen before. She had total control of the female rap pie for almost 10 years. So for almost a decade, while these other labels had to watch Nicki Minaj and her label control the female rap game. So of course these other labels are going to try their hardest to manufacture another female to compete with her. Wherever money is being made, labels are going to want a piece of that pie. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Now sabotage, that's not cool, that's slow to do if true, and I know some of y'all are saying, yes it is true, they tried to sabotage Nicki Minaj, many rappers came out and said so and so tried to pay them to diss Nicki Minaj. Well, that's not sabotage. That's trying to manufacture a moment or trying to manufacture a beef. I have heard a certain label, <clears throat> Atlantic Records, have allegedly tried or have infiltrated her team and sabotage her. But honestly, I don't really pay much attention to that narrative just because it's on blogs and because Nicki Minaj said this on her Queen Radio or Remy Ma said this or Cardi B said this. Look, people talking is not proof to me. If y'all want to believe it, that's cool. But for me though, I'm just neutral. Anyway, if the industry trying to take down Nicki Minaj means they want a piece of the rap female pie and is trying to compete, I don't see anything wrong with that. Because Nicki Minaj was kind of getting comfortable in the late 2010s and a lot of people including her fans thought her sound was getting tired and could feel that someone was going to come out of nowhere, someone that could really captivate the mainstream like her. No one complained when companies go under due to another company doing the same thing they did but better. Remember Blackberry? Some of y'all might be too young but when Blackberry started to decline in relevancy because iPhone and Samsung was producing better phones, everyone just switched to an iPhone or an Android and no consumer cried for them. It's just really how it is. When you go high, you are exposed and you are going to inspire a lot of other people and those other people are going to try and take your spot. As humans, we are competitive by nature. And I feel like that's what's happening when it comes to this whole industry Nicki Minaj thing. I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't think Camila Cabello, aka the racist queen, let me stop. I don't think she deserves the backlash that she is still getting to this day for saying racist things on the internet and let me tell you why. Remember this video that they tried to scrub off the internet? One less lonely n One less lonely n One less lonely n There's gonna be one less If I kill you, I'll be part of the KKK yeah, that's Justin Bieber when he was younger, obviously, and I've never heard people still trying to cancel him for it to this day. 
Yes, people were upset, but people moved on really quickly. Now, I'm not saying y'all should go and torch Justin. I'm just saying it is interesting how people decide how extensive they will bring up their faves past versus someone they don't like. Because, let's be honest, people already hated Camila because they thought she was purposefully overshadowing the other members of Fifth Harmony. So it was an aha moment when her racist messages online was exposed. Now, Justin wasn't really a hated celebrity in my opinion when that video came out. People might hate the things he's done, but not him. And I hope that makes sense. To play devil's advocate, a reason why people might not be on Justin's case as much might be that the video can be seen as just, oh, he was just joking. Yes, racist jokes, but oh, he was just joking. Meanwhile, we didn't see a video of Camila, only text, and she was like getting creative with the n-word. Like, excuse me? She was saying some crazy shit. She was saying some crazy things. Just an insight, so a lot of the things regarding Camila, she wasn't like making up herself, like she wasn't um, creating those posts, a lot of those posts she was sharing them or reposting them on her Tumblr and on Twitter. So yeah, some of these posts she wasn't saying herself, she was just sharing it. Some of it. She deserves the backlash though, like don't get me wrong. But I have long since moved on from it, but I have moved on from the whole situation and I'm not saying you should too because I'm not here to tell you what to do. And I do believe a racist person can change. That doesn't mean I'm going to be friends with them, but I do believe they can change. And I also believe you can say racist things, but not necessarily be racist. Trencia featuring Megan Thee Stallion was a waste of a feature. Now we get it, sex sells, the raunchiness sells, but we are now in the 2020s. It's not like the 90s anymore. People are used to the trope by now. We already have WAP and it seems like they were just trying to recreate WAP by Cardi B. Yes, this is a buzz song, but it wasn't buzzing, literally. It did nothing for Shen Sia. They wasted that feature. It had a zero crossover appeal. Now, Megan did her thing, but the rest of the song was trivial, and Megan should have never done that feature either. Just throw the entire song away. Freaky Deaky by Taiga featuring Doja Cat was heavily slept on. Yes, it was a top 40 hit and went gold in the US, but I think the song deserves more. That song should have at least been in the top 10. Taiga and Doja had great chemistry. But y'all slept on that song. That song should have been a hit or a bigger hit. Cardi B should have never sued Tasha K and acknowledging Tasha K only validated Tasha and kind of cemented her in the pop culture. Now I will say Tasha K was very reckless and stupid to get on the internet saying Cardi B had STDs and inviting people onto her platform validating it just to trend on the internet was really stupid. And I know probably some of y'all are saying, Don, it is Cardi's right to sue Tasha K. And honestly, you are right. It is Cardi's right to sue. But some of y'all just love the drama and chaos because it couldn't have been comfortable for Cardi having to take someone to court for lies and to prove that she didn't have STDs. Like, can you imagine? That must have been really degrading having to stand in front of a court to prove you do not have STDs or disprove the other lies that someone said about you. And am I the only one who thought no one took Tasha K seriously and knew she was just doing it for clout? The last thing I heard about Tasha K is that she has moved to somewhere in Africa to avoid paying the 4 million she now owes Cardi B. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so any lawyer here, please let me know if she can actually avoid paying Cardi B by doing this. All of this just got me thinking, hmm, so Cardi paid lawyers, went through the courts to hold Tasha K accountable for her lies, and now she's being awarded 4 million dollars. And I hope it's just to hold her accountable and not to actually get money because that would prove that a lot of these A-list celebrities are going broke because she lost money and Tasha hasn't paid her yet. Matter of fact, Tasha K says she doesn't even have the money. In this lawsuit, like, is Tasha K worth that amount of money to pay that? I ain't got it. It was not worth it in my opinion. And I get it. Someone telling lies on you with a platform 
cannot be easy to endure. And yes, every action has a reaction, but sometimes the reaction is simply not worth it. Hey, before I move into the next unpopular opinion, please give this video a like and share it with a friend. I would really appreciate it. Taylor Swift got famous because of Kanye West. God damn, stop that talk, man. Now, I know the Swifties are about to cook my ass and eat it, but I do believe Kanye made her more famous. Side note, I do have a video planned on Taylor Swift, but I want to get my unpopular opinion out first just to show the Swifties that hey, I'm not a stan, I don't stand any celebrities. There are artists that I really love including Taylor Swift. Anyway, in my opinion, he made her famous. Yes, she was famous already. But to me, after Kanye said Beyonce should have won the award instead, her fame skyrocketed. Now, I was already a fan, but a casual one. Like I never had her music saved, but after that, I started to listen to her albums and downloading her music. I have this family member who doesn't listen to music made by white people at all. But yeah, that family member did not listen to pop music whatsoever. But after the Kanye incident, they were bumping to You Belong With Me. And at that moment, Taylor Swift was cemented as a young legend in pop in my books.